It feels like this is the time of the year where the rubber is really meeting the road. I got to ask you, I saw you put up a poll question about all of these. Which do you think is the most important conference matchup this weekend? Uh, I think the game that will have the biggest impact on a national stage is Alabama and Tennessee because there's so many questions revolving around Alabama. Is Tennessee for real? Um, but certainly, you know, the winner of Texas and Oklahoma State, excuse me, TCU and Oklahoma State uh, is going to be a legitimate college football playoff contender. Uh, you know, Penn State, Michigan, Michigan, are they for real? They really haven't right. played anybody. Penn State's coming off, off and off, coming off an off week. So, yeah, there's just so many tremendous games this week. And I think we'll learn a lot about these these guys and who are real contenders and pretenders going forward. All right, so you said Alabama, Tennessee. Do you think Hendon Hooker and the Vols can kind of not only stay with the tide, but even win this one outright? Yeah, obviously Bryce Young's health is is key. I, I I expect him to play. That's no inside information. It's just reading the tea leaves. They sat him out last week, um, you know, against Texas A and M. They figured they didn't need him. <laughs> well, they almost did, but they got by. Um, the thing for for Alabama, if Bryce Young is is healthy, um, I know you guys give a lot of picks here on Green Dot Daily. I'll, I'll give you one, but it's conditional, and that's over 65. If Bryce Young is playing, go over, because Alabama's offense is going to have a ton of yards and points against a Tennessee defense that's the third worst in the country against the pass. But then on the flip side, you mentioned Tennessee's offense. Number one in the nation, total offense. Number two in scoring offense. There's going to be a ton of points. Um, you know, Anthony Richardson of Florida, who's basically, you know, been miserable against everybody. He threw for 450 yards against Tennessee. Jalen, Jaden Daniels of LSU threw for, threw, for, threw for 300 after being held to 85 yards against Auburn. The thing is, ultimately, can Tennessee win this game? Man, it's you look at history and history says no. They've lost 15 straight to Bama. Um, you have to go all the way back to 1985, the last time that Tennessee beat a higher-ranked Bama team. Um, I think ultimately Alabama wins this game. I just think they're they're better overall. But if Bryce Young does not play, then then obviously Tennessee would be the pick here. I hate to do that, but until knowing 100% whether Young's in or not, it's hard no. to really hard to say. I hear you. It's hard to make that kind of declaration with incomplete information shall right. we say but we'll definitely tune in to check you out on bboc on saturday morning when we have more information and then we can you know further discuss that game you know it's so interesting to me Brett, going into the season, right? You know, if you looked at kind of the national championship odds, it was, you know, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, then a huge drop down to say like Clemson, then another huge drop down to everybody else, right? <laughs> it's almost was like assumed this party would include two teams from the SEC, Ohio State if they got clean, and then maybe like some, you know, throwaway number four kind of team. Who could be that team that comes from almost out of left field and crashes the party? Well, when you're talking outside the top 10, I mean, ironically, probably the three best candidates right now are ranked 11, 12, and 13, and that's <laughs> UCLA, at 11, Oregon at 12, and TCU's at 13. Real quickly, UCLA's non-conference schedule is a joke. However, they do have a win over Washington and Utah, and they still have USC and Oregon left the Pac-12 title game. Oregon blasted by Georgia in the first game. Well, guess what? Since then, they've been steamrolling everybody. They beat BYU by three touchdowns. That's obviously a quality win. They still have UCLA and Utah on their schedule and also the Pac-12 title game. Oregon's got a shot. They have to win out. They can't lose. UCLA could afford one loss, but they would have to win the Pac-12 title um, with the 12 and one record to have a legitimate shot. And then TCU, the Big Ten, the Big 12, they play everybody in a round robin format. So TCU is going to play everybody. They got Oklahoma State this week. They have Texas coming up, and then they would have a rematch against somebody in the Big 12 title game. So if if any of those three teams can win their conference championship either undefeated or with the 12 and one record, they would be in the playoff. Now I know you could come up with a million different scenarios where they couldn't right. get in, but ultimately if you're a power five champion with one loss or fewer, you will be in the college football playoff unless there are four undefeated teams ahead of you, which doesn't look like that'll happen this year.